This is a lecture on defined names for cells and ranges in Excel 2013. Defined names for cells or ranges in Excel are very useful. You can, instead of using a cell reference such as A9, B5, you can give a cell a meaningful name that represents the data that you intend to place in the cell, such as sales or expenditures and so on. You can then use those defined names in a formula, whether it's a new or existing formula. This will make your formulas easier to understand and more meaningful. There are, of course, rules related to using defined names. They must begin with either a letter or an underscore. They can include letters, numbers, periods, and underscores but they cannot include other special characters. They cannot be a valid cell address, such as B9. They cannot be a valid function name, such as sum or average. And you cannot use a reserved word, such as the print area is a reserved word within Excel. They may be as large as 255 characters, but that begins to make them somewhat difficult to work with. The normal size is closer to 5 to 15. Defined names are not case sensitive, so even though we often use two words together with both words capitalized, if you were to type it in an all lowercase or all capital letters, Excel would understand the different, that they are the same defined name. Next, let's look at examples of how to enter defined names. Here's a sample spreadsheet I've created, and we're going to name some cells. Now here I have a cell that contains the sales for fiscal year 2015. I could simply go up to the name box up here in the upper left area of Excel, right here, and I could type in sales, press enter. Now, instead of seeing the cell reference, I see sales. To make things a little bit easier, we often have labels in place that would make good cell names, defined names. So if you simply select the labels and the associated cells, then up on your formula ribbon you will find in the defined names section a create from selection. Here pops up our nice little box, dialog box, asking us what we would like to create our names from. In this case, it has proposed the left column, which is in fact what we do want to do, and so we'll simply click OK. Now, if I select B4, which is the net sales, it now shows net sales. I can also pull down on the arrow of the name box, and you can see I currently have three named cells. I can also go to the Name Manager and Define Names, open that up, and see more information. I can see all of the name cells in my worksheet and what it refers to, what cell, that they are in this workbook, and their current value. I can use those defined names in a formula. Currently, this is a formula with B2 minus B3. It would be more meaningful if I would change that formula to include the defined names. If I go up to Use in Formula, I could simply say Sales minus Returns, and it will show me a much more useful formula here. So far, we've only named 
individual cells, I could select a group of cells and actually name those. Here I'm going to create a selection from selection using the top row. And now these three cells together are labeled FY 2015 with the underscore. One last thing I would like to go over is how to place the defined names into my documentation to make it well documented. Over on my documentation sheet, I can now add these in by going to Use in Formula. So I've selected a cell on the documentation page, and I go to Use in Formula, and I simply click Paste Names. And I'm going to say Paste the List, and it offers up a list of all of the names and their corresponding cell addresses.